from Washington, D.C., it's The Cube, covering Oracle Cloud World. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Washington, D.C. This is The Cube, we are in the nation's capital. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante co-hosting The Cube, here covering Oracle Cloud World, but we're going to do a special Cube segment, really, Dave, because we're in the nation's capital. We, you know, we're live. Um, the government got election year. Trump is just completely killing the Republican Party. My Twitter feed is exploding between Hillary, Bernie, feel the burn. So you got a lot of politics going on in D.C. But the real politics is the cybersecurity. So let's talk about that. And two, obviously Oracle doing an event in D.C. on the doorstep with another cloud event we're covering um, in California, uh, the Google Developer Conference, so their user conference, Google uh, Compute Platform. So it's a cloud war. Okay, the cloud wars are here. Oracle's not even mentioned in the top three. CNBC had a chart yesterday, and they weren't even in the top three. It was Amazon, Microsoft, IBM Google. was in there. IBM was in there, yeah, yeah. I've got about IBM. So, so, okay, what does all this mean, right? I mean, what's your take? This industry is going through a significant transformation in the cloud, no brainer, everyone sees it. But now you're hearing things like ERP workload in the cloud, cybersecurity, what's your take? Well, everybody defines the cloud as, you know, in Amazon's model of the cloud, which is infrastructure as a service, and obviously Amazon's done a tremendous job making infrastructure code, beautiful. Where all the action is in cloud, John, is in software. <laughs> everybody's trying to become a software company, everybody's a SaaS company, everybody's doing digital. It's SaaS is where it is. Two places, SaaS and developers, yeah. right? And that's really where a company like Oracle has a play, Oracle, SAP, Oracle responding to Workday and Salesforce, obviously, but you know, when it's easy to, to, to make fun, poke fun at Oracle, oh, old stuff, old line, lock in, blah, blah, blah. Oracle is dead serious about the cloud. They're okay. spending a lot of money, they threw up $12.5 billion in the last four quarters in free cash flow, and Larry's pouring that money into cloud. People always laugh at how small the numbers are vis-a-vis -vis Oracle's main business. When I talked to Mark Hurd on our exclusive interview, he says, John, the numbers are tiny. We're Oracle, we get this massive number, of course we're in cloud, we're going to win cloud. But I got to ask you the question, with the narrative in the marketplace, because you and I see it, we have the data, we know the naysayers out there, there is a huge anti-Oracle crowd out there, we call the naysayers, they say, oh, it's the same old message from Oracle, you know, just cloud washing, uh, we're hearing from them directly here. What's your take? I mean, is Oracle truly changing as a company from your perspective, and I have my opinion, but I want to get yours. What do you think? Well, I think there's no question, the company has to change, it has to make a major cultural shift to the cloud. I mean, Oracle are very smart people and they understand that, first of all, they can make a lot more money renting long term than they can necessarily selling in the old perpetual license model. So that's first and foremost. Now, that transition will cause some pain financially because you go into a ratable model, but Oracle can they have manage so much cash. through that. They got so much cash they can manage through that. So, listen, I, how many times have I said on theCUBE, the rich get richer, you know? yeah. and Oracle is amongst the richest of the rich. They know how to do acquisitions, they know how to do R&D, they know how to compete, and they have their database license and maintenance business, which throws off tons of cash. So that's my take. John, the, the linchpin of all this, to me, is the developer community. That's your kind of wheelhouse. You see it in Silicon Valley. Yep. What are you seeing there? Well, first of all, I agree with you, Oracle, is the rich, the, the rich guys on the block. Amazon's getting richer, by the way. They're not poor either, by the way. Right. IBM's got some dough. Um, Google's got some serious cash. So as it, does Microsoft. it is as Microsoft. <laughs> so those are the rich guys on the street. They're the big houses. But the developer community- The wealthiest will, 1%. The, the developers <laughs> will be the swing vote in all the game because here's what's going to happen. The developers are moving to a full stack developer model. If you're not a full stack developer, you're just a bit player in the overall equation. So you're going to start to see a shift to the developer community where full stack developers will be mandatory requirement. I'm putting aside the designer, UX designers, I think that's a specialty in its own, full stack developer wins. The second thing that I'm seeing in Silicon Valley is, and what Oracle's tapping into, that I don't think anyone understands is, the software industry is huge. Oracle's been a big major player. You don't even hear the word SAP anymore from Oracle. They're like it also ran in their mind, right? So all the analysts, the journalists that covered the software business are now on the heels. Then here comes this new game called cloud, Amazon, right? It's Google's in there. So the cloud is not software, but yet, as you say, software is everything. 
So if you look at the total addressable market, the TAM, it's software plus cloud is the TAM. That's where Oracle is going to win, and that's why they will be in the top three, no doubt, because when you bundle the software market together with the cloud market from a, quote, rankings and TAM, it's all going to be one. The numbers will be significantly bigger than public will think. Two, Oracle will be in the top three. Well, and Sean Price says they want to be number one. So, so like they don't even get credit for the cloud. They're like the Rodney Dangerfield of the cloud. They get no respect. That's just in the cloud world. In the software world, they got a ton of cred, they got a lot of dough. Well, if you want to do a critical analysis of Oracle and Oracle's cloud business, I think you can, it's fair to say that the marketing is definitely ahead of the execution. But as they say, oftentimes, because Oracle spends so much money on R&D, they, like Microsoft, will get it right. So for example, Oracle put up today, I mean, logo slides, very impressive. Here's our HCM cloud customers, here's our ERP cloud customers, here's our infrastructure as a service cloud customers. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of logos. Okay, if you go inside and look at that, they've purchased a lot of companies, they've acquired a lot of companies, the experience is not seamless across all those logos. It's yeah. not seamless across all those software capabilities across all those services. There is a lot of work to be done. The documentation isn't maybe as consistent as could be. So, they have some work to do. Of course, okay? it's and early. It, and, and, but it, it is early. They go at the speed of their customers, so they don't have to be as fast, for example, as Amazon at some of this yeah. stuff, because they have this huge footprint and real estate of customers that are generally pretty slow. Even the IDC data today showed half the customers are embracing cloud. <laughs> Only half. Right, so it's still early to There's your a lot point. of marketing game going on, but right. Dave, here's my take, right? So this came up uh, today in the interview and we'll tease it out. It's one of the CUBE insights right. that I saw today that I, that I took away. And that is, if you want to figure out who's winners and who's losers, because you get the same questions I do. Who should I invest in? Who's going to be the winning company? Who should I work for? Which company should, product should I buy? Everyone is looking for some sort of indicator of who's winning. Here's my take on how you tell who's winning. The talent that they have. If you look at the talent that Oracle's putting on the board, logos, customer wins, okay, they can maybe manage that, they have install base. So new business, what new customers are they getting? That's one measure in my mind. Two, the talent. If whether you're an enterprise customer or a vendor or whoever, if you have talent that can execute, you're winning. It's the talent game right now and Oracle is attracting some talent. I mean, Donatelli's over there. This guy we just interviewed from Simplicity came on. He's a, he's a tech guy, Curry and lured him over. This, it's not just the cash that's luring them over, they got tech. So to me, that's an indicator of Oracle's momentum. They are getting the talent, and that's a lesson for all the enterprise. I think that's a huge point. I mean, the other thing too is, there are a lot of, of Oracle practitioners inside the Wikibon community that we talk to, and it turns out that Oracle's really good at hard problems, at the mission critical, really gnarly, nasty stuff. ERP, uh, OLTP, you know, hardcore database stuff. That has not moved into the Amazon cloud. Amazon making a lot of noise about Oracle running an Amazon, how they're going to, they, they've announced the Oracle killer, their database, Aurora, et cetera, et cetera. That stuff's not moving to the, to the AWS public cloud anytime soon. Oracle has a really strong lock on that. IBM with DB2 as well. well. But Oracle has a bigger footprint, bigger real estate, does a great job with security, and understands all those enterprise capabilities very well. Okay. Always, their customers trust them. We talk to them all the time. There's no doubt that Amazon has put Oracle on notice. And if you look at Oracle's move, I want to okay. get your thoughts on this. Oracle is going to go blow for blow with Amazon on price. It's, do you agree? It, they're, they're yes, kind but of I have signaling. a commentary on okay. that. Okay, so let's analysis. So, so if Oracle's strategy is to go frontal competitive with Amazon on price, that means they got to get down and dirty on price and then provide the value for people not to go to Amazon. That engages Amazon directly. What's your thoughts on that competitive strategy? Yeah, so strategy? Amazon's response to that I, I think is going to be, okay, fine, bring it on. We're going to be focused on our customers. We're going to move faster. We're going to deliver more services. We're going to do way more volume. We're going to have a greater operational efficiency. And ultimately, I've been arguing for a while that Amazon Web Services is very profitable. We're now seeing the numbers. Their operating margin is you know, 28%, much, much higher, for example, than EMCs, which is in the you know, mid to high teens. So Amazon can play that game very effectively. Where Oracle wins is up the stack in PaaS and database as a okay. service, and obviously in applications. That's where they're going to extract their value. All right, so let's talk about value. One approach is just go fast, new product releases, good price, that's Amazon. Oracle's going to have value up the stack in the software. 
Is there enough value for Amazon to match Oracle value for value with their growth strategy? Yeah, it's a trillion dollar market. <laughs> so volume? Amazon could be a hundred billion dollars. Uh, volume, but profitable volume. I mean, Amazon's numbers are incredibly impressive. Eight billion dollars, 70% growth, a billion dollar storage business, 28% operating profits. That's a, there's no business like so that. Would you, so would you say? Red Hat just became a $2 billion company. They're growing at 15%. Amazon's an $8 billion company growing at 70%. Amazon Web Services. Amazon, Amazon Web, Web, Web Services. Services. It's right. astounding. All right, so, so would it be safe so, to say that Amazon Web Services is a volume play and Oracle Cloud's a value play? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. And, and, and no question about it. And Oracle has the right strategy. Look at, look at VMware and EMC. That is a very difficult play. They have to be an arms dealer. Look at HP. Much, much harder business than what Oracle has. Oracle, massive margins, okay. software-like marginal economics. Same with Microsoft. Microsoft is really the interesting competitor here, Yeah, in my view. Well, Microsoft is the only one that matches the similar value play that Oracle's playing. Leverage your existing assets and change the game, move the goalposts, if you will, against the competition. And, and IBM to a certain extent, but what, IBM's... What, that's what IBM, is IBM creating value or are they going head to head against replicating Amazon. Oh, definitely the former. I mean, IBM's all about making acquisitions, creating digital media, new digital services, content distribution networks, Watson, Cognitive. I mean, they're pivoting to a whole nother set yeah. of values. And so, I see Oracle and IBM is, is very interesting and somewhat similar. Amazon from a full stack, of, I mean, sorry, Microsoft from a full stack approach. Now Amazon, I think, is eventually trying to get there. You see, in the investing more in database, the question is, what happens to the Amazon marketplace as they keep going yeah. up that stack? So, is it winner take most market? The yeah. question is, they all have different approaches. It's like they all get scattered in the woods and they all got different paths. Who comes out on the other side? Well, I think the market is very segmented. Like Sean Price says, no, we're going to be number one. Well, in overall cloud, Oracle's not even close to number one, but start looking at the SaaS piece of cloud, the high value piece of cloud. Oracle absolutely can be number one, number two, number three in there. And in infrastructure as a service, I really don't think Oracle cares about making money in infrastructure as a service. To them, it's I a agree. lost leader. It's plumbing. Who cares? It's a, it's a oh. means to a so, higher value end. Isn't the software business just SaaS? It's That's, largely it's it? SaaS, and it's, and it's the tooling okay. around middleware to right. enable application development. We are in DC, cybersecurity. We haven't heard much about that. Cybersecurity, a big deal. Um, your thoughts? Well, security's changing, right? Most of the investment historically in security has been on protecting the perimeter, but all the actions happen inside. The bad guys are getting inside and they're not getting detected for 300 days on average. So things have to change. Big data analytics has to come to fore. New types of security models have to emerge. The cloud, in my view, can absolutely be more secure yep. because you've got greater consistency and you can make changes faster to the cloud. So I think the cloud is actually going to help address some of the security problems, assuming that the practices can follow the technology. So I think, I think Microsoft is going to have a little bit of a challenge compared to Oracle, and even IBM, even though they're winning why, now. Why do you think that? I don't think Microsoft understands the digital transformation. I have a- Because they're what, too removed from the I customer? I think they're or? so stuck in their old way, right? The cloud certainly has shown some promise, right? And they're with Satya Nadella, but like, they're just not a digital company. I mean, I just don't see Microsoft as a digital company. Do you think that's because they're one step removed from the customer, that they're delivering through HP well, they're or They're Dell a traditional or... computer vendor and software company mm -hmm. in that old model. I mean, they're not as accessible executives. I mean, the way they do their marketing, the way they talk to their customers, the way they talk to developers, it's old, antiquated formula. So that's my opinion. They're .NET, is what you're saying. No, no, just <laughs> look how they engage. It's like this, the same old, same old Microsoft. Yeah, the cloud's growing because they're doing some work there. IBM, Oracle, they're doing digital assets, they're changing their business. I don't see Microsoft changing their business. Google is all digital, but now they got to have much more of a social presence, so you're seeing them with their conferences, trying to be more uh, open. They, In a very strong data angle. They're open with their content, they, all the videos are online. So or, uh, Google's going to be, the issue with Google is, can they go fast enough? Microsoft has to absolutely change their business practices on how they engage the buyer in the buyer's journey. Okay, IBM is definitely there. Oracle's shifting. We heard Sean Price. They're doing things like theCUBE. They got open video conferencing. They're open to their customers. They are becoming digital. They're digitizing. So I like that. So I think the challenge is going to be how these companies reach the buyer. They're, like their customer's customer. And ultimately that's going to be who wins the big money. 
well. And as I say, I mean, Oracle, IBM, very high touch. You know, Microsoft, one step removed is really kind of what you're yeah. saying there. But still very, you got to admit, Microsoft's still a strong force in the developer community. They've got a huge yeah, do. footprint, huge real estate, you know, of Microsoft buyers, developers. Yeah. But I hear what you're saying. They're entrenched in some of the old ways. They're, they are not accessible. They've got heat yeah. shields in front of them. Digital transformations about digitizing it's everything. Not of, it's not the Freedom of Information Act inside of Microsoft. That, I'm that's not, for I just, sure. They're not that social. I mean, just the, in general, I think they got to get there. I don't think they're anti. Just they're a big machine, right? So yeah, slow to move. All right, this is the Cube. We're watching the Cube live. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, live in Washington D.C., the nation's capital, for exclusive Cube coverage at Oracle Cloud World in D.C. Thanks for watching, and look for us next week at Big Data NYC. I mean, Big Data SV Silicon Valley. And then we've got all the CUBE season coming up. We're going to be in Ireland, all over the world. Keep watching. SiliconAngle.tv. Go to Twitter and search Cube Gems. Hashtag Cube Gems. Get all our highlights. And of course, go to SiliconAngle.com and Wikibon.com for all the great content. Thanks for watching. <laughs>